everybody and welcome to Waggers' Wings episode 2. So in my last video I showed you how to boom and zoom competently on the 6th training mission of Rise of Flight. Today I'm going to show you how to energy fight. So uh, what if you haven't got the height advantage? Uh, what do you do? So um, the first one I'm going to show you the wrong way to energy fight. So here we're flying the SPAD-7. Now the SPAD-7 is one of my favourite aircraft. It can climb very very well. Uh, but it doesn't have a particularly good turn, so we play to its strengths. Um, now, in this example, I am not playing to its strengths, so um, there is an Albatross D2 that was diving on my airfield, and I've decided to turn with him. Um, and as you can see, slowly but surely, I'm getting worn down, um, I've just been wounded, um, and so he can out-turn me, he can get inside my turn. Um, and as I do that, I'm burning up energy and I die. So this is not how to use this bad. <laughs> So the two main tactics we use are the high yo-yo and the low yo-yo. So high yo-yo, we use our height, we turn in, dive, pull through the bandit. Likewise with the low yo-yo, we dive under the bandit using the speed and use our speed to, ha to turn. So this is the correct way. So here we go again in this bad seven. So the problem is we have a D2 attacking our airfield. Now I know that uh, Burkle's... Um, dictum said that you should always meet the attacker head on but that is not what you should do when you are flying an aircraft with a better climb rate than your opponent so the spad is faster and can climb better so the first thing i am going to do is i'm going to extend so i'm going to put some distance between myself and the d2 so there is the d2 on my tail so i am now flying with the d2 behind me in multiplayer i often have the uh, albatross pilot saying oh you're a coward come back loser uh. Well, well, that's nonsense, because if I was to fly towards him in the SPAD without a height advantage, then I'd lose to him. So I would be an idiot. I would not be a coward. I would be a fool. So we're extending, and as we extend, um, once we get to about 500 metres distance, so he's not going to have a very good firing solution, we start to climb. So we can see the D2 is trying to climb with us, but the SPAD is a much better climber. Um, and as we begin our, um, our climb, um, eventually we start to put a little bit of turn into it. So we're slowly turning back towards the bandit. So you see now the bandit, um, that's his view of us. We're quite a, quite a bit above him now, we're about 200 metres above him. So we continue to turn, continue to turn and uh, to climb. So as he comes towards us now, he's regaining us. He's still nosing up, so he's losing energy and not climbing as well as us. He's trying to nose up to get at us and he's going to stall. So he takes some shots at us. Um, he's going to take the shots and he misses and this is something that happens to me all the time in multiplayer with the albatross pilots nose up. So as he stalls we dive in and we take our shots. Now we only get a few seconds of firing, probably less than a second here, so we take a quick burst and we come up for the high yo-yo. So we climb up and then roll into our, of the bandit. And we don't try and keep our turn with him, we turn into him, get some shots, there we go, some deflection shots and climb again. But there's always a vertical element to the dogfight. So we are climbing up, turning into him again diving back down and this occasion we can't quite get inside his turn so rather than diving and trying and, and trying to turn and burning off our energy we just stay above him um, because he can't come up and get us now in multiplayer some of the better uh, albatross and dr1 pilots would probably just be nosing up and uh, prop hanging and they might get a lucky hit on me and they might fuel up um, the calls a fuel leak or if they're very lucky hit my engine uh, but generally as I'm careful that won't happen so here we go I'm diving in again and I'll take some shots um, and I'm just wearing him down gradually. That's just a jam there in my Lewis gun. Um, as I said in my last video, energy fighting is about patience. It's not about the quick kill. Um, it's about wearing down your opponent bit by bit. Um, in this example, I've been a bit unlucky with the Albatross. Um, I would have thought that I would have done more damage to him by now. Um, as, as you can see with the SPAD-7, I've taken the extra gun, the Lewis gun, on the top wing. Um, this doesn't really affect the performance noticeably. Um, I always take the extra gun particularly because when you're uh, energy fighting you only often have a very small firing window. Um, you also need to be pretty accurate, you've got to be pretty good um, with your rudder, um, you've got to have uh, pretty good accuracy. In terms of uh, lead um, and uh, leading your target, because the speeds of the well-born aircraft weren't so high, um, usually under 100 miles an hour, um, you know, often as low as 50 miles an hour, uh, you don't need to put that much lead on your target, so aiming just above the propeller is absolutely fine. So here again he's trying to nose up and get me again but once again he has stalled. So we're diving on him now and we get in a nice good burst there. He's almost certainly very very badly wounded. Um, and so as you can see the SPAD can actually turn with um, an Albatross. 
but only for a very limited amount of time once we've got a, uh, when, it's, when we're going at speed. So at a low, at the low speed, the, the, the spad turns very poorly, but at a high speed, it's turning pretty well, as you see. The other thing I like to do with this spad um, to keep up the energy is not to use very much rudder unless I absolutely have to. Uh, when you use your rudder, um, you're creating some extra drag, so um, you're going to slow down and lose energy. So here I'm really just using aerolons and elevator. So now he's pretty badly injured, so I'm no longer bothering to um, to yo-yo um, pretty dramatically. A little bit of a low yo-yo there, but I'm now I'm really turning with the bandit because he's, he's done for. He's, he's smoking, um, he's leaking fuel, he's almost certainly pretty badly wounded because he's not manoeuvring very well. So now I can just finish him off. So a nice long burst and rip goes his way. So as you saw in the last video, it wasn't as dramatic as those kind of one dive kills with the SPAD-13 with the balloon guns. Um, it's, it's much more of a longer process. Um, and I'm fighting against the uh, expert AI here, so I'm going against the ace. So uh, um, you can, you know, it, these, these tactics do work in multiplayer and it's how I get most of my kills. But what you won't find is that you won't get, you know, 20 kills in an hour. Um, so this is the outside view here of, um, of my, uh, of my uh, yo-yos, who's coming around for another high yo-yo. Um, just so you can see what it looks like in the external view. So you can see it every time we're using that energy to dive in and just get inside their turn and just get in those deflection shots. And eventually you'll do critical damage and you'll take him out. Um, so this is, a, this, is, this is the most effective way to use the SPAD, um, the SE5. It's about knowing your aircraft. You know, the, 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 the SAD-7 is an energy fighter. Um, it, it's not a turn fighter. You can turn with a bandit, but only for very, very limited periods and whilst you're travelling at high speed. So you should never try and get into a slow turn battle. Um, if you look at the, the score leaderboards for um, some of the popular uh, dogfight servers, you'll see that the, the, the pilots with the most kills, so they'll often have you know, 20 kills in a, in a mission and they'll be flying the DR1, but that's only because they'll be flying DR1, um, which is, uh, has the most ridiculous uh, turn radius, so, so such a small turn radius. Um, and they'll be going up against people using the SE5 and the SPAD incorrectly. Um, and I'll find that the newer parts, the noobs, will say, ah, oh, well, the SPAD is, is a, it's not a very good aircraft, they hate it, the SE5 isn't very good. Um, and often those kind of pilots, uh, I'm not going to name names, I'm not going to be petty, but I'm sure you guys know who they are. Those kind of pilots who always take the DR1, always take the, the, the D5, the Albatross, they really don't understand uh, how to energy fight. And energy fighting um, really was probably uh, more, more closer to how the combat would have been in World War One. I. I mean, after all, you want to get in and out of there and you don't want your enemy to get shots off at you. Um, it, very often in a battle I won't receive any kind of hits at all. I might get a bit unlucky and a bit stupid whilst I'm trying to rope a dope. That is when I'm causing them to nose up and stall to try and get me. Um, but that, that's usually only why, it's, it's usually when you make a mistake. If you're a good energy fighter you can only lose by um, making stupid mistakes. Um, so really for me the, the SPAD-7 and the, and the SPAD-13 are the best aircraft uh, in the game by quite a long shot. Um, their real nemesis, as I said in my last video, is the, uh, the D7F. Uh, mostly because the D7F is very, very manoeuvrable um, and has that fantastic BMW engine, so um, it can climb very well. Um, but uh, under, I think, 1,500 metres, nothing can match the SPAD-7 on climb. Um, likewise, the SPAD-13 has a much better climb than pretty much anything other than the, uh, the D7F. Um, likewise, the, uh, the Pfalz, um 12 can be a bit problematic at high altitudes. It's got a good uh, maneuverability at high altitudes. But generally, um, the SPADs are pretty untouchable if they're used appropriately. Um, so I hope you found that useful. Please leave any comments um, on my wall. Or, um, if you have any questions, um, I will put up some more videos and show you some more elements um, of uh, dogfighting and boomer zooming. Thanks very much.